Hey everybody, it's Dwayne, Developer Evangelist at Git Kraken. I'm here today to tell you about Git LFS, which stands for Large File Storage. This is a way to manage repositories with a lot of larger assets. You can move those assets to storage somewhere else and then replace them in your repository with tiny little pointer files. I'm going to talk to you about why this exists, how it works, and then how to get it set up with the command line and with Git Kraken client. To best understand where Git LFS comes from and why you should use it, let's take a step back and look at how Git works. Every time you make a Git commit, you're taking a full snapshot of the repository at that state in time. It's storing in a complete compressed version of all of the files in that repository. In cases where the file doesn't change between commits, it simply points back to the previous version of that file. Very efficient. When Git was first created, it was intended to manage text files, code and configuration files for the Linux kernel. Since then, Git has been used by every kind of project on Earth imaginable, some with a lot of video assets, some with a lot of audio assets, some with a lot of images, some with a lot of other binary files that take up a lot of room. The real issue with Git and these kind of files is that every time you replace one of those files with another file, so like the next version of an image or you've cropped that image, it's also compressed down in that snapshot. If we add these things up over time, our repository gets very, very large. No matter how much you compress it, if you have a 200 gig video that you keep modifying and adding and committing, your repository is gonna keep growing and growing and growing. Larger the repository, the slower it's gonna get as you're pushing things across the wire or even working locally. This was the use case that Git LFS was built to solve. Instead of pushing those media assets up into your repo, you can actually push those to a different server, and then only reference them from inside the repo. So instead of pushing a 100 meg object, you're only pushing a few bytes around for that small little reference object. When you need to work with those files locally, they'll be there because they'll be pulled back down from the LFS server. When you clone or pull from that remote repo, Git will read the reference and actually pull down the right file from the LFS server. This is all handled for you automatically. All you need to do is declare what type of files you want Git LFS to handle for you to push over to that LFS server instead of into your repo. And good news is that you do not have to go figure out how to set up your own Git LFS server. All of the major Git hosting providers provide this for you. Now check with the individual provider of your choice to see what the limitations are and if any costs are incurred over a certain limitation, but all of them offer it. Let's look at how to set up Git LFS first with a CLI, and then we'll look at using it with Git Kraken Client. Here we are inside of Git Kraken Client. I'm using the terminal panel inside of a repo tab. Uh, this would also work in a terminal tab or any terminal you want the integrated terminal in VS Code, the terminal on your desktop, this will work wherever. This repository holds a copy of Moby Dick, which is in the public domain. And in the spirit of being public domain, I have pulled some of the public domain images off of Wikimedia to add to this repository. I'd like to use Git LFS to go ahead and store those on GitHub's LFS server. So to do that, I need to first install Git LFS. I'm on Mac OS, so I'm gonna use Homebrew to install Git LFS. If you're on Windows, Linux, or another system out there, uh, you're gonna to need to look up the instructions on how to get up and running with Git LFS, but this is how you install it for Mac. Uh, it will take a few minutes and I'll cut to that. Now here we are a few seconds later and it's installed. And you can see that it's actually provided me the next step I need to do, and that is to update global Git config to tell it to use LFS. And we do that through the command git LFS install. And just like that, it's updated my hooks and it's initialized git LFS. The next step on using git LFS with a command line is to declare what type of files that git LFS needs to track. You can do this for specific files if you only have like one very large movie file or declare entire types of files by using a wildcard.extension notation. All my files in today's example use .jpg, so I'm gonna declare that entire type of file. So git lfs track, and then in parentheses, I'm gonna tell it wildcard is the asterisk, 
jpeg. And now it's tracking all of those files. And you see, it's actually updated my git attributes. If we look in there, it's filtering for large files jpeg. From a user perspective, that's all I need to do. From here on out, all JPEG files I add to this project will automatically get turned into reference files, where the actual files that are stored locally will get pushed up, in this case, to GitHub's LFS service, since this is a GitHub-based project. And I can go about my work just like I normally would. Now let's take a look at using Git LFS with Git Kraken Client. The first step is going to be to install the Git LFS program. This is going to be the same no matter how you access Git LFS. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I am in Git Kraken Client. I'm using a terminal panel inside of a repo tab to look at my Moby Git repo. I'm on Mac OS, so I'm going to use brew install to get Git LFS installed on my system. And you can see here it was already installed. Now, if you're using Windows or Linux, you're going to need to go look up the exact command to run. But if you're using Mac OS, just brew install git LFS. The next thing to do is configure LFS in my preferences. So I'll go click the gear icon, scroll down to the repo specific preferences, and click on LFS. And it tells me git LFS has not been initialized yet. So let's go ahead and initialize it. It's done. So next, I just need to tell it what patterns to look out for. All the files in this example are .jpeg, so I need to tell it wildcard for all and then jpeg files. Add tracking pattern. And just like that, git lfs will start tracking all the JPEG files inside of this repository. Let's go back, exit preferences, and if I look at my git attributes, it's been modified now to say, yes, we're going to use git lfs filtering every time a JPEG file is found. So now if I click onto one of these images, instead of the full on image, what I get is a small reference file that points to where specifically this file is. So instead of pushing up almost 1.6 meg, I'm pushing up a file that is three lines long and just a few bytes. You'll also notice that there's a new toolbar option called LFS. This will give you a shortcut to some LFS commands, such as fetch, checkout, pull, push, or prune. You can find out more about any of these options at support.getkraken.com that will walk you through what each of these do. But now LFS is set up and configured. And from a user perspective, anytime I add a new JPEG file, LFS will simply track it. Get Kraken client will actually keep an eye on it and tell me that, hey, this is tracked by LFS. And I can go about my work just like normal. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that helpful. For your next project that has a lot of media files in it, go ahead and try out Git LFS. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how much it helps the performance of your repository.